Is it working? <laughs> I really, really hope it's working. Oh my god, there's a lag again. Not again. Hi! <laughs> How are you guys doing? Um, I see that there is a lag, or at least there's a lag on my end, so please let me know if there's a lag on your end. Um, this is kind of what happens in these live bookshelf organizations. I, there's a lag and I have no idea if it's working or not. So can you just tell me if like my voice is in sync with my lips? Is it, is it working? <laughs> it's working. Yes. Okay. Cause last year I spent about five minutes trying to get the live stream working. All right. Awesome. Hi friends. Um, I am here to reorganize my bookshelves today. How are y'all doing? Um, so, oh, this is so weird because I'm looking at the live chat and like it's out of sync with me. So it's a little strange, but okay. So I am reorganizing my bookshelves today. As you can see, they're pretty bare. And I do have two new bookshelves over here that we're also going to be filling. So we're going to be here for a while. Have a snack, have a drink, whatever you want to do. Oh my goodness, there are so many people watching. Hello. Didn't realize how many of you would show up. Um, so yeah, so basically, um, oh, I just figured out how I cannot confuse myself. This is genius. All right, awesome. So I obviously have already started a little bit, and that's because this took me four hours last time, and I have two more shelves. So um, I figured I might as well get out like the, the little things out of the way, um, and then I'll start. But feel free to chat in the comment in the live chat. I'm watching the live chat, so if there's anything you want to talk to me about, we can do that. I just realized I also forgot lipstick, but oh well, who really cares at this point? Um, but yeah, so yeah, feel free to, to come and go and pop back. This will be live on YouTube after, at least it should be live after. Um, it was last time, so I'm not really sure. But as you can see, <laughs> um, six shelves are already filled. And the reason I did this is because my Harry Potter and my Mortal Instrument shelves have so many little trinkets on them. And... For the most part, they haven't changed. Like, it, this has been the same since, like, 2015. I haven't really changed much, except getting new additions. Um, but also, I now changed the Infernal Devices shelf a little bit, because now it has my born editions of City of Bones on here. Um, and then I have the Dark Artifices shelf. So I'm not going too much into the Shadowhunter shelves because I will be doing an updated Shadowhunter shelves tour, which you guys really enjoy, because I do have a lot of new goodies that I love. So those are like that. Also, Harry Potter shelves have not changed, like, at all. Um, I made a third shelf that mostly just holds my extra editions of uh, the Sorcerer's Stone and Fantastic Beasts and, like, my extra Funko Pops because I'm eventually getting more Harry Potter books. I'm, like, growing the collection like I did with my Royal Instruments books. Like, I, I want to get both of the UK editions, and they're going to go there, so I figured I'd just block off the space now. Um, so those are, that's basically one bookcase full. So we're already off to a really great start in my opinion. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I have a lot of books on the floor. No idea where they're going to go. I counted last night. I have 506 books. So that's a thing. Um, so I'm, oh yeah, what time is it there for you guys? Because I, I always do a poll on Twitter to see what time works best for you guys. Um, so like I asked you guys to vote, so I'm sorry if it's very inconvenient for you. I left it as, um, you know, I left it open for you guys to choose. So I'm sorry if it's super late. Like I said, it's going to be up on YouTube later. Hopefully. I really don't know how the live streaming thing works. Oh, those times are moving in so fast. <laughs> um, it seems it's either midnight or 6 p.m., which is, you know, decent considering my audience. Um, so yeah, so I figured I really like having my contemporary books underneath like the Mortal Instruments and Harry Potter books because this is generally where it cuts off for um, like my, when I'm in angle filming. So I have now like two diverse bookshelves which I'm really excited about. So I have my stack of mental health books here because I wanted my own mental health shelf. Um, and I'm going to move this back down because I have to kind of sort these on the floor. Because I like to sort my mental health books by disorder because I'm crazy. Um, so yeah. 
What are you guys currently reading? What do you want to chat about? Let me know. Where did I get my outfit? Um, the bralette is from Charlotte Russe because I had a sale for, what was it? They had a sale for like buy one bralette, get one five dollars. And that was a very awesome deal in my opinion because I've been wanting to get a bralette for the longest, longest time. And I, um, for some reason, I just, I didn't get one until now. Um, and the shorts are from Garage Clothing, which is literally like my new favorite store. All of their clothing is like very, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like very plain colors, but it's very soft. It's like all made of cotton and stuff. And I really, mm, dropping books already. This is off to a great start. Um, so I really like their clothes, which is very nice. Uh, so let's see. Oh, you're reading Lord of Shadows. Lord of Shadows is my favorite. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, I realized after my, um, after I posted my, what was I trying to say? After I posted my uh, Harry Potter review, so many of you guys were reading Harry Potter at the same time as me, which I think is very, very cool. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, Eleanor and Parker, I haven't read that one. I'm gonna, I mean, there's so many comments that it's hard for me to respond to literally every single one. Oh, I see a relevant one since I'm doing my mental health shelf. If you could only recommend a single mental health book, wait, it's going to do best. If I could only recommend a single mental health book, which would it be? Um, very, oh, I just, I lost the chat. Very good question, um, because there are so many great mental health books to read. Um, looking at it, I think I would recommend Under Rose Tainted Skies by Louise Barnall because it deals with anxiety, OCD, agoraphobia, and, um, anxiety, OCD, agoraphobia, and self-harm, and I think that there is so much for people to relate to. It's an own voices novel because the author deals with the same, um, three conditions. Um, so the rep, in my opinion, is very authentic. And I think it is all around a really powerful, important read, and I think everyone should read it. <laughs> For those of you that are just joining, literally nothing has happened, so you're fine. <laughs> okay, I think I have all my mental health books sorted, so I gotta think of the best way to do that. I think I'm gonna do it like this for now. I don't. I normally like to like have them in all different sorts of um, all different sorts. Oh my goodness, that scared me. <laughs> I like to have them in all different sorts of like, you know, some I like to stack that way, some I like to stack up, but because the mental health shelf is a new thing, I am not entirely sure how, like, how many are gonna fit on here this way, so we'll have to see. Not exactly sure yet. Um, have, I, have, I, have I ever read the girl in the blue coat. I have it. I've heard the girl in the red coat is fantastic, um, but I have not read that one yet. Um, I heard the School of Good and Evil series. I have not, but funny story. You guys know that I love Books of Wonder, which is a bookstore in New York City. They have a million to ten signed books. Really, really wonderful independent bookstore. And um, they have signings literally all the time. And so one day, I was just in New York City for something completely unrelated. I don't remember what it was for, but I ended up, um, uh, I ended up accidentally stumbling upon a uh, signing for the School for Good and Evil series, which was pretty dang cool. So yeah. Oh look, I have like extra space. I can actually fit more mental health books here. Is that it? That's freaking awesome. I'm very excited about this. Can you believe you already have one shelf done? This is literally like the coolest thing in the entire world. <laughs> How would you like fantasy with mental health rep? I would love it because the only one I can think of at the moment is Lord of Shadows with Arthur Blackthorn, and then um, 27 Hours by Tristina Wright has a character with anxiety, and I think there might also be a character with PTSD, but don't quote me on it. So those are literally the only two science fiction fantasy books I can think of that have um, characters with um, mental health conditions. So I would love more of them. Um, now we have my LGBTQIA books, and... The rest of my diverse literature, because I have so many mental health ones that I wanted my own mental health shelf, and I don't exactly know how I want to sort these. <laughs> um, so let's just see how many fit 
in one spot. Let's see how many can fit here. Uh, will I make a video discussing to the bone? I really, really want to. Uh, I haven't seen it yet though because I have been preparing for this for about three days because oh, this is still touched down. Okay. Um, I've really been wanting to read to the book. Uh, to read to the book. I want to watch it so badly, and depending on what time we're done with this tonight, I might watch it tonight because I uh, haven't watched it yet. I really, really liked it. But um, oh, that fits like just perfectly. Um, so everyone has been asking me to do a video review for To the Bone, and I'm honestly thinking about it just because so many of you want to know my opinions. Um, if you've read it, if, you, if you've read it, I'm just in total book mode. Um, if you have watched it already, I'd love to know your thoughts. So feel free to let me know what your thoughts on To the Bone were, if you have read it. I have no idea how I'm going to fit all these books in the one space. Um, alrighty, well, we'll see how this goes. We'll see how this goes. Oh! Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda is fabulous. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Okay, what is that really shiny book on the infernal devices shelf? If you're talking about this one, this is, oh, that one. Um, it is the Italian bind-up of all three, um, of the first trilogy of the Mortal Instruments series. Um, and it was sent to me by Sarah, so thank you so much, Sarah, for sending it to me because it was literally my pride and joy, and one book doesn't fit on this stack. I'm so pissed already. Mm, this one isn't as colorful as I wanted it to be because my mental health books are all, like, so colorful. Let's see. Yeah, you're not looking. Oh, please tell me these all fit. I'll be so pissed off. <laughs> I don't think they're all going to fit. Oh, wait. Oh, my God, they all fit. This is literally so exciting. You don't even understand. Oh, I'm so happy this is working. <laughs> yeah, the Italian team on covers are so beautiful. I feel like I'm on a good roll so I can, like, pause and stuff. Um, but this is the this is the Italian edition of the first trilogy of the Mortal Instruments series, and it is so amazing. Wish I spoke Italian, but my mom and I were actually my mom knows a little bit of Italian, so the day it came in the mail, we were like playing around with the book, trying to pick out the um, like what words we can decipher and like if we could tell what scene it was, and it was a lot of fun. Ugh, now I don't know where to start. <laughs> um, so essentially, I have this. One shelf, and then I have one, two, three, I can't count. One plus two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine shelves left. I still think I miscounted. And I'm wondering, do I like, I have in this pile, like I, I've sorted them so that some books go over there, like with, that are definitely going on this other shelf, and then I have so many here that I don't know if they're going to fit, so I don't know. What, what do I make this shelf? What do I make this shelf? Do I make it high fantasy or urban fantasy? Someone help me, please. This is why I'm live, because I need to give you guys an help. Okay? Um, do I read classics? I don't. I still don't. I'd really, really like to in the future. <laughs> um, but I just, I have, I have no interest in a lot of classics at the moment. Like, I have to really, really, really be into... Um, I have to really be into a classic to want to read it, and there hasn't been one that I'm really interested in recently, which is a shame because I would love to. Okay, most people are seeing urban fantasy, so I'm going to do that, and I think someone said something colorful, so I guess we'll start with my Rick Riordan books, because those are for sure the most colorful fantasy books I have. Literally, why do most fantasy covers, why are they not colorful? They're mostly black and dark colors, and it's such a shame. Like. Look at how pretty these Rick Riordan books are. They're so pretty, and they're fantasy. Um, okay, I I have, like, no... <laughs> I always make them look the same. Like my, my Rick Riordan books have been to the left corner of... Oh, I'll go up just well. They have been to the left corner of my bookshelves for so long. Oh, this is... Nope, that's the correct order. Um, but... Oh, my God, this my Funko Pops are definitely going to fall in the middle of this. It'll be fun. 
Alrighty, so there goes those. Like this looks identical to my last bookshelf, honestly. What's the difference between high fantasy and urban fantasy? It's essentially, it has to do with setting. So for example, urban fantasy takes place in a world like our modern world today. So like Harry Potter, Mortal Instruments, Twilight, all urban fantasy because they take place in our world and it's like the underlying fantasy world that the normal world that we don't know about. High fantasy, the entire world is fantasy. It comes with its own like individual history. Um, so it's basically just like a matter of time period and setting to my understanding. Now I'm stuck again. Um, let me see. Do these fit? <gasps> they fit perfectly. Oh my goodness. Have you ever seen anyone get like so surprised that books were fitting on the shelf? Like, this is literally my life right now. Um, can I recommend some high fantasy books? I definitely can. I love the Six of Crows duology by Lee Bardugo, which um, everyone thinks that you need to read Grisha to read it. You don't, they're totally separate. They just have to do with the same world. Um, and what am I trying to say? Uh, so Six of Crows, I'm looking at my high fantasy stack like right here. Truth Witch by Susan Denner, an epic high fantasy series, um, which is all about like different types of witches. And it's super, super cool. Um, um, I really love the Court of Prince and Roses series by Sarah Jane Mass. It's one of my faves. So I'd really recommend that one as well. Um, I'm, I'm stuck again. I'm, I'm a little stuck. Um, okay, so I, I was having a lot of trouble figuring out where to put Because You Love to Hate Me, which is the villain anthology from BookTubers, because I haven't read it yet. And I think some of them have to do with, like, fantasy-esque, and some of them are, like, modern day. Um, if you guys know what genre it is, that would be great, because I can only categorize it as anthologies. Um, so yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm going to put it with urban fantasy. Um, so we'll put this on the bottom so I can stack up. Oh, 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 I know what. No, maybe I don't want to put that there. This is so difficult. Why am I doing this to myself? Um, okay. Okay, let's, let's see what we have going here. It's, it's a something. Something is happening. This is actually really pretty. Whoever suggested do something colorful, thank you. Um, let me see. What kind of fantasy story would you want to be in? I would definitely want to be in urban fantasy. That's what I grew up reading. I grew up reading Harry Potter and Twilight and then the Mortal Instruments. So all my favorite, um, all my favorite urban fantasy books are, in fact, like, all my favorite fantasy books are urban fantasy. And I think it would be so cool to, like, be able to discover one day that there is this, like, whole world of fantasiness. <laughs> That's not a word. That's not a word. There's this whole other world of, you know, fantasy-like things. I'm not making sense. There's a whole other world that we don't know about, and I think that is super cool. Um, okay, so we have three shelves down, which is freaking awesome. <laughs> How far through Akawar are you? I have five hours left of my audiobook. Things are getting crazy, and I'm enjoying it so much more than I thought I would. Not that I thought I wasn't going to enjoy it, because there were a lot of, um, there were some negative reviews. Um, not, well, not negative, there were mediocre reviews saying that, like, it wasn't, like, the best. And I do think that it's not, it doesn't compare to Akawar. It doesn't compare to Akatar and Ako, Akamath. Um... So I, I definitely agree that it doesn't compare and it's not as good, but where it is in um, like this story right now, freaking fantastic. I'm loving it. Um, I think I actually was spoiled for the ending, which is very sad. But, you know, it happens. We take a risk in the online book community, and that is fine. All right, I think I'm going to make this my second urban... Do I want to make this one urban fantasy or urban fantasy? I have, like... I'm expecting to have one more urban fantasy shelf and two or three high fantasy shelves. Um, so let me, should this be urban fantasy or high fantasy? So there's urban fantasy there, so I don't know, do I make urban fantasy below or do I make it across? What do I do? <laughs> All right. Um, my bookshelves are from Ikea. Um, they're from Ikea, and I really love them. I actually put them together for the very first time myself. 
um, with my boyfriend's help, obviously, I couldn't do that myself. But we actually, um, okay, everyone say high fantasy, so we're gonna do high fantasy. Um, what, what was my track of that? Yeah, they're the Billy Bookshelves from Ikea. The white ones are $69, the rest I think are $79. And it's a lot of fun. They're, they're really nice. I like them because they're very simple and like the focus can be on the books. Whereas with like certain other, um, what am I trying to say? With other, <laughs> what am I trying to say? Um, certain bookshelves otherwise that have like patterns or are like, you know, they have like intricate lines and stuff, I think they can be distracting. Like I want my focus to be on the books. So I like that it can just be like a very neat, clean, um, I like that it can be a neat and clean sort of a, you know, just to bring focus to the books. Um, so I'm going to just talk about my psych major. I don't know exactly what you want me to talk about with my psych major. I love it. I'm so excited to finish my degree, not just because, like, that means I'm done with school for the time being. Oh, these are not going to fit. So I really do love my psych major. And it's been a really great experience. I would have been happy in college anywhere else. So I'm like extremely glad that I chose that as my major. And um, what did you say? I'm currently getting ready to apply to grad school, which I'm not excited for. I'm terrified and I cry every day. <laughs> but um, I'm studying for the GRE right now, which is absolute hell, but necessary if I would like to um, you know, it's necessary if I want to continue my education and want to actually become a mental health counselor. But it'll be fine. Oh man, come on! Now I can't just slam my beautiful pair of glass books. It's the whole re the whole reason I bought this these UK editions of Throne of Glass that I haven't even finished the series is to display them, and now they don't fit, so they have to just go there. Fine, whatever. <laughs> um, what was it? I was talking about school. Um, so yeah, I, I really love my psych major. I'm so happy that is like where um, I found myself. Um, I've taken most of my psych, I've taken basically all my psych required courses already. I only have two left, but like every other class I've taken is, is psych elective, which is a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, it's been a good time. If you have any specific questions about my psych major, I would love, love to talk about them with you. I just don't know exactly what to talk about. Um, everyone's asking about Shadowhunters. So let's let's talk about Shadowhunters. I, if you didn't know, if you don't follow me on Twitter, you should, because I'm a mess. I actually, um, what am I trying to say? <laughs> um, I stayed up until 5 a.m. one night watching catching up on the first five episodes of Shadowhunters, which was an experience. I don't regret it. <laughs> um, and so I wrote all of my notes out. So I have notes for the first five episodes of Shadowhunters. I am going to make videos. I originally wasn't because it is just like so much work for me to, to watch Shadowhunters two to three times, film a video for an hour, edit a video for one to two hours, and then upload it like in one week along with school and, well, I'm not in school now, along with work and my internship and studying for the GRE and maintaining the rest of my YouTube channel. So it was so much for me to do. So I was like, I'm not even going to watch Little Hunters like this season. Like, I'm just going to, maybe I'll do something at the end. I'm not sure. But I eventually decided against that. And I decided that I wanted to watch them all in one night after last Monday. I just, I needed to be in the loop. So I ended up, um, you know, I ended up watching it, and it, it was it was good. You know, I, I was pleasantly surprised. Well, I'm just looking at the rest of my high fantasy books over there because I think that I might actually have room to put some over here. So I'm going I'm going to turn so that you guys don't have to stare at my bookshelves alone. Although I doubt any of you complain. This is the rest of the books that we're going to be putting away regularly. Regularly, we're going to be putting them away later. Um, and so. Let's talk about Shadowhunters. So yeah, I have notes written for all first five episodes, and I'm going to be uploading them. You're not looking at me. I'm gonna be uploading them in like two episodes per review. So like I'm gonna have episode one and two, three and four, five and six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, 
no idea when they're coming because I have I have so much like focus like I have so many other things to focus on right now. Like the buying of Bibliothon starts next week. Um, it's gonna be crazy. So that's a thing. And then um, what else am I doing recently? Uh, yeah, studying for the GRE. Like I need to stop procrastinating with that. That would be really really great if I could do that. Um, so I have like a lot of stuff to focus on right now, but I am totally, totally reviewing them this season. They're going to be long because my challenge reviews normally were like 15 to 20 minutes. So like it's going to be like a uh, 30 minute review because it'll have two. <laughs> so yeah, that's a thing. Um, what, was, what was the question? What actually is the biannual bibliothon? I am glad you asked. So the biannual bibliothon is a readathon that I host with a couple of my booktube friends. It's a great time. It starts next Sunday, so not tomorrow, but it starts the Sunday after. And essentially, the point of the biannual bibliothon is to read as much as you can for a week and to participate in video challenges if you would like but we also have instagram challenges that we announce on the day of and then we're having blog challenges that we are going to start announcing we're going to be announcing those starting tomorrow one day so that you have like a full week to write out your blog post but you just you do not need a full week to write out your blog post because it's nothing like complicated or anything like um they're they're very simple and they're just for fun so we have blog challenges instagram challenges video challenges and reading challenges we have the group book. Our group book for the Vinyl Bibliothon is Flame in the Mist. So if you haven't read Flame in the Mist yet, you can read it with us this week. Otherwise, obviously, we don't expect you to reread it. And we have a live show on the Sunday following the Vinyl Bibliothon, which is going to be... Uh, what, is, what is the Sunday of the Vinyl Bibliothon? What am I trying to say? The 30th, I think, is our live show for Flame in the Mist. And so, in regards to the video challenges, um, in the video challenges, we have giveaways going on, which is going to be very, very fun. And so, essentially, you have the opportunity to win a couple of books from us, which is nice. Um, and the reading challenges are basically just to, like, promote you to read as much as you can. We have Twitter sprints. It's a whole ordeal. Every kind of, anything you could possibly want to know about the Binding Bibliothon is going to be on our channel, youtube.com slash Bibliothon. So I would really, really recommend checking that out. Um, let's see. So yeah, that's my new Bibliothon. Would definitely recommend joining us next week because it's gonna be a lot of fun. I know it's the same week as Booktubeathon. It happens. We have been dancing around each other for three years now because this is our third summer by new Bibliothon. Um, so it happens. Participate in whatever one you want to. Maybe you can find a way to participate in both because. Our, um, our video challenges are already up, so maybe you want to pre-film this week, and then you can film the Booktubeathon challenges as they're announced during the week. Maybe you want to double up on challenges. Maybe you want to pick your favorite ones from each. Do what you want to do. But there are so many readathons going on right now, and I think it's awesome. Um, I have not read Flawed yet. I did get that in an Owl Crate box once. Um, okay, I think I'm going to take a break from this shelf at the moment. I do have more high fantasy books. But I want to put my other fantasy shelf together to see if there's anything else that, like, I, um, if there's anything else that I'm going to be putting on that shelf. Also, just forgot I have a book in a book box that I just got, so I want to grab that because that goes on the urban fantasy shelf. Or maybe, nope, nope, it's not in here. I have no idea where it is right now. <laughs> where did I put that book? Jeez. This is, this is what's happening. This is, this is the thing. I lost a book already. Oh, so that's a thing that happened. Um, how do you choose what books to unhaul? Um, mostly I choose to unhaul a book if I have no interest in reading in the future. So I'm very, very um, generous with that. Like if I really do not see myself reading it in like the next year, in the next like three years, like that's like, don't read, you're not going to read that book, don't even waste your time. So that is um, a big indicator for me is if I like don't see myself reading in the future, why am I going to keep it? It's just going to take up shelf space and then I'm going to have to keep getting new ones and I only have space for one more six shelf one and then another short one that I can put over there. So that's basically 
I literally have not changed my way of organizing bookshelves in so long. It's ridiculous. Um, what was I saying? Unrolling books. Um, and it's basically just like if I'm not interested in reading that, like I, I don't, unless I like really don't like a book, which doesn't happen very often, I will unhaul it. Like, for example, like The Duff. Like I really didn't like The Duff when I read it when I was like 18, so I unhauled it. I haven't actually gotten rid of any books ever yet. They're all in my closet because I haven't decided what I want to do with them yet. Um, but that's a thing that's coming. I will be um, unhauling them in the future. Um, what was I saying? What was I saying? What was I saying? Yeah, it's basically just books that I am not interested in reading anymore. And, um, you know, like on occasion, like it'll be a book that I don't like, or maybe like I will, you know, if I like wasn't interested in the book, like and I was already going to unhaul it, but I was like kind of keeping it just in case. If like I disagree with some actions from the author, like, you know, uh, I'm not gonna name names, but um, there was an author who was very homophobic, so I unhauled their books just as a, a personal thing. So that's a factor as well. Um, but it's mostly just like if I'm not interested in it anymore because I have so many books that I bought when I was just like, just getting into booktube that I just wanted new books and I wasn't really interested in. So like I just mostly get rid of those. Oh, is Michael here? Hello, Michael. Weren't you supposed to come over and help me do this? Where are you? Where are you? Tell me about your internship. I would love to tell you about my internship. So essentially, I'm going to grab more books over there. Essentially, um, this summer I'm interning at the National Eating Disorders Association, and I'm really, really enjoying it. <laughs> um, essentially, my internship is primarily focused on um, communications. <laughs> so basically what I do is, uh, okay, so these are all the high fantasy books, so let's see if I can put them on the shelf. Uh, what I do at Nita is I do a lot of stuff related to, is Michael calling me on FaceTime? <laughs> I was getting new books, that's why I ignored your FaceTime. Now I'm calling you and you're not answering me, Michael. Oh my god, say hi to Michael. Oh, say hi to Michael. Oh, no. I'm putting you on the screen. Say hi to Michael. <laughs> are you not gonna are you not gonna hang out on my live stream or no? <laughs> okay, Michael, I hang up the phone. <laughs> I'm just going to keep Michael in the corner until he decides if he wants to actually be on my live stream or not. <laughs> I'm not ignoring Michael, I promise. Okay, so, Michael, do you want do you want to say hi to everyone? No. Oh, uh, you don't have to point me at the screen. That's, That's Michael. His channel is Michael Book Lion. Really would recommend him. He just posted his 2017 favorites video so far. Um, and he is my favorite of 2017, so you should definitely go subscribe to him. <laughs> I don't know if anyone could hear what you're saying. Okay, I will FaceTime you after my lunch year, I promise. Okay. I have, I'm putting books on my shelves. Okay, go back to watching time. <laughs> That's Michael. He is my best friend. Okay, back to Nita, because I obviously can't stay on one topic. So essentially... Um, with Nita, I do a lot of blog related things. So like I will write a lot of blog posts, I will make prompts for other writers to write, um, I will do a lot of proofreading people who have submitted blog posts. So like if somebody wants to write about like their story with their eating disorder, I will proofread it to make sure it doesn't contain triggering content, to make sure that it is accurate, to make sure that it is like consistent with you know what the message that they are trying to get across. So I do a lot of proofreading as well. Um, I will often look up um, I will often look up contact information for certain people that they want to interview. So like for example, there is a YouTuber. Oh, what is her name? Ari Fitz. Um, she is an androgynous queer YouTuber. And um, she has this campaign going on currently with 
one of her, um, oh, I hope he's fit. Yes! Okay. She has a campaign going on right now with her side project. Um, it's like tomboyish, I think it's called. And essentially, tomboyish is like trying to redefine swimwear. So, like, my supervisor asked me if I could look up um, their contact information, which was nice. So that's the thing that I basic. That's basically what I do. Um, nothing fits in here. That's really upsetting. Um, what else do I do, Anita? I, I like help them draft tweets and stuff. Like if there's a certain event going on that they are, um, you know, that they're planning. Like, uh, you know, for Prime Day, they they were trying to get people to use Amazon Smile. To um, they're trying to get people to use Amazon Smile for. Um, so that you could donate to Nita, which is really, really awesome. I really recommend uh, doing that. If you don't have an Amazon Smiley account already, I really recommend setting one up. Um, so that's something that they did. Oh man, I was so close to fitting. Um, so yeah, I just do a lot of like communicate. Like my title is uh, communications intern, so I do a lot of stuff related to communications, and it's very nice and very, very happy there. And I'm super glad I have the opportunity to work with an organization I care a lot about. Let me just get this last one on here. So this kind of turned into like a half urban fantasy, half high fantasy thing. I have like my like paranormal books here, which works because I don't have a ton of room on my urban fantasy shelf. I only have like a tiny, tiny bit of space left. So I'm going to put these high fantasy books to the side for the time being, and we're gonna see what else I can fit on there. Um, the new doctor is being revealed tomorrow. I thought he was already announced. Isn't he a ginger? I could be wrong. I thought it was a, um, I thought it was an, a British actor with orange hair. I could be wrong though. I haven't been up to date with Doctor Who since like my freshman year of college, so I'm a little behind. <laughs> um, so yeah, so yeah. Oh my god, I want to see all your Biobit videos. They're literally my favorite thing in the entire world. Do I still watch Doctor Who? Um, I recently rewatched it, but my rewatch doesn't really go past season seven because I wasn't a huge fan of Peter Capaldi as the doctor. Like, Matt Smith is my doctor. So, um, what am I, what was I looking for? I'm like upset that, like, certain high fantasy books don't fit over. <laughs> Was to say, I, I really loved Matt Smith. Matt Smith was like my doctor. Uh, no, it's not Rupert Grant. It's a different, it's a different British actor. Um, but so essentially, Matt Smith was my doctor. And do I really um so yeah, so for the third time, Matt Smith was my doctor. And it was quite a transition. Um to a new person, like I had watched season five of, Do well, my first ever episode of Doctor Who that I watched was Blink, um, because I was obsessed with Charlie McDonald and Chameleon Circuit, and so I mostly, I watched so many of their videos and they talked about Doctor Who, so I watched Blink first, because Charlie McDonald has a song about it, and, um, what was I saying? I don't remember my train of thought. <laughs> so, um, I, I ended up going to season five first, and uh, that's why Matt Smith is my doctor, because he's the first doctor that I like watched through seasons with, and then I went back to one and started with Eccleston again. So having like Matt Smith be like my favorite person in the entire world, I wasn't um, as interested in Capaldi, because I had been watching all these other doctors for so many years. So I kind of lost interest in like the newer episodes, but I still love Doctor Who, and I will always rewatch it. It's fantastic. Uh, okay. I still don't know what to put in the corner of that urban fantasy area. We have been here for 40 minutes, and I've only done that much. That is so ridiculous. <laughs> um, I really, really did not want to break up, because I have like more urban fantasy books over there. Oh, why am I doing this to myself? Okay, I'm just gonna try and shove the rest of these books over here so that even though they're not for the fantasy, it'll be fine. It'll be fine, I hope, at least. Um, let me see, what can I get over here? Ow! I just hurt myself. So sweet and stupid. <laughs> 
this is not going to um, we'll just throw these up here, see how much space I have left. Oh, I still have a few pieces of it. I might actually be able to put all of these on here. That is so freaking cool. No, that needs to go there. Never mind, I spoke too soon. There's no way that I'm going to be able to fit. This one high fantasy book doesn't fit. I'm so pissed. Maybe it does fit. No, I think it's too big. Oh my god. I did it. I put all the fantasy books I designated on this shelf. I am living right now. This is so extra and I don't even care. <laughs> oh, we're talking about the 100. Obviously, Michael is a part of this conversation and I guarantee you he's going to tell me that I need to catch up because I have not. <laughs> what books are you currently reading that you'd recommend? I'm currently in the middle of Aquawar, which I'm really, really enjoying. Um, I'm also in the middle of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, and yes, on the topic, uh, rereading for the Vine of Wibblethon is totally okay because I'm rereading Harry Potter for the Vine of Wibblethon. Um, and I just finished Daughter of the Burning City, which I loved. Fan-freaking-tastic book. Totally, totally would recommend it. Um, so yeah, those are my current reads. I have no idea what book I want to pick up next. I'm thinking I'm going to pick up there's Someone Inside of Your House by Stephanie Perkins because it's quick. And I have one more, um, I have one more week before the Bind of Oblivion, so I want to read very small books so that I'm, like, able to start on Sunday with Flame in the Mist. So I'm thinking of reading There's Someone Inside of Your House next because I'm definitely in the type of reading mood where I need to, like, really, really be in, mood, in the mood for what I want to read. So, oh my god, they almost fell. <laughs> so yeah, that is my um, my current predicament, is that I am trying really, really hard to read the stuff that I'm like super in the mood for. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be reading, there's someone inside your house, I think I'll start that tonight if I have the time. And then I will, um, we'll see what happens after that. We'll see if I get to a second book this week. I really love that because I've only finished two books this month so far. Um, which I don't really like to do more than that. So we'll see. I'm pleasantly surprised with how well I'm doing on books. Like, this is, this is way better than expected. <laughs> um, let me see, let me see. What kind of books would you recommend? Wait, no, don't go away, don't go away. <laughs> what kind of books would you recommend for somebody getting back into reading? Um, I think it depends on your personal preferences. Like, if you are a big fantasy lover, like, read fantasy, if you don't like fantasy, read contemporary, but like just general book recommendations that I think everyone loves, Harry Potter, obviously, always a go-to, um, I think, I mean, I, I don't know, Michael, help me, Michael's good at helping you with book recommendations, what would I recommend to somebody who is like just getting back into reading, um, Adam Silvera's books and Becky Abertali's books are like my two go-to for book recommendations because they're contemporary, um, they deal with intense topics, but they're pretty lighthearted, which I think is always really nice. So I'd recommend those. Um, is this going to oh, This is going, like, really, really well. <laughs> do I want to grab more sci-fi books? Do I have more sci-fi books to grab? I literally... Oh, no, I do. I do have more sci-fi books. I can put on the shelf. This, oh, my God. I almost just knocked over a huge pile of books. So glad y'all didn't see that. Um... I am back. I am here. I promise. Um, let me see. Favorite book boyfriend? Obviously, Jason Mayland. That like is not even a question. Um, let me see. I'm tired. <coughs> yeah, favorite book boyfriend will always be Jace. No one, no one competes in my eyes. Um, okay, let's. Oh. See, they're getting like less and less creative as we go down, and that's sad to me. Do I have like a super thin book to put there? No. Maybe. Do I have a super thin sci-fi book that I can throw in there? Oh my god, I might actually be able to condense my sci-fi books into one shelf, which would be super freaking cool. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Oh, I might actually do this. Oh, crap. If 
front hook that fits here, I'm literally going to lose my mind. Oh my god. I really, like, this is, like, best case scenario, and I know that means that my second set of shells is going to be a disaster, because nothing, they never fit this well, ever. Um, let me see, give me, like, five seconds to go back to the chat, because I just want to finish this, because I feel so freaking accomplished, because everything is fitting. Like, I cannot believe they all fit so perfectly right there. Oh, my goodness. And it doesn't look too bad, you know? It looks stuffed. Um, that is one thing that, like, I don't have much space for sci-fi. I have some space for high fantasy in here, which is really great. Um, and I guess I'll just have to rearrange and stuff. Like, the reason I have, like, these shelves here is because these are the ones that I'm going, I, like, film in front of the most. And so, um, like, I want these to be, like, my favorite, favorite, favorite books. So, like, on the urban fantasy shelf, I do have a way to take things off that, like, I have a writer that I'm not as interested in. So that will be fine, and I can move around that high fantasy shelf too because I'm going to have another fantasy shelf or maybe two fantasy shelves over there. So I have, hmm, do I have, I think I can make it work with just those three shelves because I keep my arcs at the very bottom of my shelves, and, ooh, <laughs> I don't know if that will actually work because I do have a lot of books over there. A lot of books over there. Um, hmm. Um, oh, someone's got to get banned. One second, guys. <laughs> no, why didn't you get blocked? Okay, good. Good. If anyone is being, like, rude or, har or like, harassing people in the comments, please let me know so that I can even block them. <laughs> um, favorite artist bands at the moment. I am obsessed with Rez at the moment. If you guys know me, you know that I listen to mostly electronic music. And Rez is so good. She's literally, like, so unbelievably amazing. I can't even express it to you. She's this young woman producer, and she makes the most amazing mu music. It's very reminiscent of Gustafelstein, which, if you don't listen to electronic music, you'll have no idea who I'm talking about. Um, but, like, in regards to, like, big profile um, artists, like, kind of similar to Dead Now. And she's really, really fantastic. 10 out of 10 would recommend. She's so freaking good. Um, but yeah, honestly, I mostly don't, um, I mostly don't listen to, like, a lot of artists. I listen to, I listen to, like, songs mostly. Like, I've been listening to Most Girls by Haley Steinfeld on repeat like crazy because I love Haley Steinfeld. So that's, like, one thing as well. Oh, that was loud. Um, yeah, I'm not writing a book at the moment, but I have a lot of ideas. So maybe one day, oh, I can't believe how big this is coming out. <laughs> maybe one day I'll write a book. I've had ideas. I have a lot of ideas. So um, that'll be that'll be a thing. Maybe one day. I'm just looking for someone that's okay. I did block the person you were asking me to block, but thank you. <laughs> Worst to my book, worst book, can I just say my least favorite book? Why does it have to be my worst book? Um, my least favorite Mortal Instruments book would probably be, hmm, I think, I feel weird because I haven't reread them since, like, end of last year, maybe this year. Um, my go-to is probably City of Ashes, which, like, isn't, um, sorry, my, like, hair, my bobby pin is itching my head. Um, City of Ashes is probably my least favorite City of Bones book just because I'm not a fan of sequels. I never have been. Every single sequel I've ever read, like, has never... No, I don't think I've ever had a sequel that I liked more than the original book. So that's probably why. But I think the rest of them are, like, so good. Like, I know City of Fallen Angels gets a lot of hate, and I personally love City of Fallen Angels. So I don't know what y'all are talking about. Oh my god, no, wait, Shadow Me might not fit on there. Ugh! We're so close, guys. We're so close. Alrighty. Let's let's do things this way. <laughs> I don't know if all my selection books will fit. I like genuinely do not need two dystopian shelves, but it's cool. Whatever. Ugh. Yes, my 
Where, which arm is it on? This one is uh, Sebastian Morgenstern's Lace It From Will Instrument series. I will be doing a tattoo video soon. I get asked literally every single day. I will be doing one. Um, I've been waiting because I really wanted to get my fifth tattoo, but my studio never called me back. So I'm going to have to like pursue them, but I haven't been because I have been making this into my office and making my other room into my bedroom. So I have been spending a lot of money on that, especially which is great because I haven't been buying books. I have about a single book in the first 15 days of June, of uh, July, which is fabulous <laughs> for me at least because I normally cable off right now. Um, so that's a thing. Oh, okay. I'm ready. Um, I don't remember what it's talking about. <laughs> let me see. Let me let me grab some more of these. I can't believe this is working out as well as it is. Like I'm truly amazed. Truly, truly, truly. That works. Um, favorite book of 2017 so far? Obviously, Lord of Shadows. That's just kind of like a given. I don't even have to think about that one. <laughs> yes, Lord of Shadows is absolutely a fave. Always will be a fave. Um, what else? Because Lord of Shadows is like kind of expected from me at this point. So I'm like, what could be... Another one. Um, the Hate You Give is a big one for me. I love The Hate You Give so much. Um, other mental health books I've read. What I Lost by Alexander Ballard. Fantastic book about eating disorders. I reviewed it. It's coming soon. So, so, so good. Um, what else? What else? What else? Put up here. Yes. Okay. That's a full shelf. It's very bare. Very, very bare. But, um, you know, you know, this, this stuff happens. Um, what, what other books have I loved in 2017? Um, I've read, oh, I love Tash Hart, Tosh Hart's Soul Story. Fantastic book with an asexual main character. Would 1,000% recommend it. So good. So freaking good. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to do at this point. I'm, like, I'm stuck. I'm so sorry. I know Zoe's reading really is going on right now. Um, and I really wanted to participate, and after I had made this day as a suggestion, I was like, I'm so mad I can't participate now. <laughs> um, no, 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 let me see. Um, we know that when you have a son, you're going to name it Jace, but when you have a girl, you're going to name her Clary. No, I'm not going to name it Clary. Um, me and Doug haven't agreed on that one yet. <laughs> I am pushing for a book character. Uh, Doug is not. <laughs> We'll see, but he's agreed to Jace, so maybe one day. I am I'm very stuck. I'm gonna leave those last two ones empty because I already have a basically full arc shelf and I like landing my arcs at the very bottom. So I think I'm gonna leave those two empty. I'm just like not one hundred percent happy with these dystopian shelves. Hmm. There's like no way for me to make them better either. <laughs> They're just like kind of stuck like this. Or maybe, we'll see. This is where things turn into a bit of a hot mess. Um, so I don't exactly know how things are going to go here. <laughs> we will see. We'll see if I can figure this out. I don't think so though. There's like no way I can fit all of these in one job. Maybe. This one is like, it's not as pretty, you know? Like, this is so pretty, and this is so pretty, and even these are so pretty, but just the rest are just like not pretty. And I'm saying that, because I want it to be pretty. I really don't think that I can fit them all on this one shelf, though, which is very exciting. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do with myself. That, like, does not help. Alright, we're gonna we're gonna have to make two stupid shows. Alright, let's see if I can do this. <laughs> oh okay, almost not exactly. Not exactly. I don't know where Shadowy went. <laughs> where does Shadow go? There it is. Uh this is the 
this is this is the part of the lecture where I get real messy. So I'm very sorry. I literally have no idea. What Give me like five seconds to figure this out because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know. So, someone asked me a question again so that I can try and stay on track. Let's see. Uh, I did answer on currently reading. Currently reading uh, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I'm reading A Court of Rings and Ruin. And I just finished my other physical book today. So, I am going to be starting There's Someone Inside of Your House by Stephanie Perkins very soon. No idea when in reality, but it's coming at some point. It looks like it fit there. Please don't all fit there. I'm sad and angry and mad. <laughs> uh, we're getting there, I promise. I'm making progress. Oh, come on. You're going to squeeze in there. I've really abused my Shadow Me books, to be honest. They are so distorted because I keep cramming them to spaces that they don't fit in because I want them to be displayed like this. So they're definitely distorted. One day I will buy hardcovers of them when they make this in a hardcover. I'm so close to figuring this out. I'm so freaking close. Okay, I'm sorry. These three books are going to have to go on my other shelf because these are dystopian favorites and you guys are going to have to stay there. I made it work. <laughs> it's something. It's something. Now I have no idea what to do with this shelf though because I have like four dystopian books that I, I mean, I do have another dystopian pile over there, so it's fine. But I genuinely don't know what to put on that shelf. <laughs> Will I phone collabs at y'all fest if I go? Oh, I think that question was directed at Michael because I stopped talking, so everyone wanted to talk to Michael instead of me. I would much like to uh, film collabs if I go to y'all fest, though. Um, oh my god, now things are moving really, really quickly. Have I read Moxie? It's so great. Yes, I have read Moxie. I have a review phone for it. It's so freaking good. Everyone needs to read Moxie. It comes out. September either 19th or 25th. I don't know exactly which one, but it's so good. So freaking good. You must read Moxie. Okay, I think I think I'm gonna have to do my third contemporary shelf um, down here, and I really don't want to. There's so many books on that shelf, so I'm gonna have to divide it into two, I think. So we're gonna we're gonna move over here so I can sort them so that I can actually pick which ones I want. And everything is just in the corner over here. <laughs> what was my favorite subject in high school? My favorite subject in high school was definitely photography, which I know everyone's going to be like, that doesn't count. What is, what is on my floor? Oh, I'm like, I literally thought that this was like a fake hand, but it's it's the, uh, the styrofoam in case I need to turn on my light later. Um, yeah, photography was definitely my favorite. I got an A5 on the photography AP, and I really, really loved it. So I'm very grateful that I had the opportunity to take photography so much in high school. <gasps> or do I want to... Okay, question. <laughs> do I want to make that spare shelf? Do I want to make it my adult shelf, which is what was there before, or do I want to make it my second spare um, contemporary shelf. Do I do adult books or do I do contemporary books? I'm not sure. What should I do? <laughs> um, do you have to read Lady Minute to read Lord Is Yes, it's the second in a series. <laughs> Wait, someone tell me what, what books do I put over there? I genuinely don't know what books to put over there. Okay, okay, there's so many. It's literally tied. Um, I think I see more adult though, so we're going to do adult. Let's do adult books that are not book of the month club books because that's going to get their own shelf because they get so many. Okay, we're doing adult, we're doing adult, we're doing adult. Um, okay, so this is adult, and this is adult, and this is adult. So now I somehow I have to carry all three of these over there. Alrighty, alrighty. Let's get this done. 
this part is boring when I have to move everything. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, now we can come back. Now we're back. Awesome. Okay, sweet. What have I missed? What have I missed? What have I missed? <laughs> um, how do you read books with accents? I don't. I've never, I read in my own accent. Um, sometimes, like, I'll be able to read in, like, a a British accent if it's like like I can read Harry Potter in a British accent because I've watched the movie so many times but I haven't um I like don't, like if they tell me that she, they have like a like a Hispanic accent or something like I I can't replicate it because I don't know how to do one my bed is in my other room this is my office now which is why I have so many bookshelves um and I have my my bedroom which is separate now did Michael leave? Is that what you guys are saying? <laughs> uh, can you please do a video on the GRE? I would prefer not to because I'm not even content with how I'm studying and it's something that I'm still trying to figure out. Um, I have two GRE test books and I have a tutor for the math, but like I haven't been doing anything other than like answering a few questions per day or at least aiming to because I haven't been doing it every single day. Um, so I really am not the best person to help. I guarantee you there's better videos online that can tell you how to do, um, how to study for the GRE in a more successful way because I am definitely not studying to the best of my ability. Um, all right, let's see. Um, do I get Doug to read my favorite books for series two? Um, sometimes, for example, he read The Silence of Six, which um, is a book about hacking, and he really enjoyed it. Um, but I tried to get him to read Ready Player One and Six of Crows, and he didn't get into those as much, which is fine, because it's just his personal preference. Um, but, yeah, so, that's the thing. Uh, Doug doesn't read most of my books. I would love it if in the future. But for the time being, he doesn't, and that's okay. Um, okay, and I guess we're just going to start stacking. These really have no order whatsoever, <laughs> so I'm just kind of a uh, kind of shoving them wherever I think we can go. To be honest, like I have my self-help eating disorder books here, but there is one there, so I don't really know what I'm doing to be honest. And then all my Jillian Flynn books are different, and it makes me so angry. I really wish they were just all the same size, but Book Depository doesn't make it clear. <laughs> They only tell you it's the wrong size, like, in the very, very tiny descriptions of the book. Um, so this shelf is done, which is really exciting. This is, this is so exciting. Like, I'm, I'm so excited over this. It's only been an hour and I have an entire shelf done. So I'm so, I'm so happy. I don't know why the last one took so freaking long. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I have, this is my current bookshelf. Um, I'm leaving the bottom ones for arcs because I like to have them line the bottom and as you can see on this one they've already started lining the bottom so those are my older arcs. These are my newer ones that like start from like this half of the year on. Um, so yeah so we're gonna move over there but I do want to answer one question. If you if I think I'm developing an eating disorder do you think it's more helpful or harmful to read an eating disorder book? It depends on the book. I would Highly advise against eating disorder fiction like YA books because those can be very, very triggering. But there, I do have recommendations for books to help people with eating disorders. Um, so I would really recommend especially these two books by Jenny Schaefer, uh, Life, Without Ed is, Life Without Ed is the first one, and Goodbye Ed, Hello Me. And they are essentially about this woman's experience having an eating disorder for 20 years, I believe. Um, and it's essentially about how she 
enters, like it's a story of her eating disorder and how she enters recovery and um, it really focuses on the fact that recovery is possible and that like there is a life after this and I love these books so much. They were my lifesaver in Inpatient. So if you think you're developing an eating disorder, really recommend uh, reaching out to other people and getting help for it because it's extremely, extremely difficult to combat on your own. But if you're looking for books to help you, Johnny Schaefer's books are serious, serious recommendations. Like I can't stress enough that like th these are so great for people, e either who have eating disorders, who are recovering from eating disorders, or for like family and friends and loved ones who are like interested in learning more about eating disorders. And she's she's good friends with Nita, which is my organization. So really, really recommend these ones. Uh, okay, now let us let us move. Over to the other side, um, where I have no idea what I'm doing. This is where it's going to take me about, this is going to take me a while. <laughs> um, I also haven't tested where I want this to go, so I think I need to move this very far back to where you can see the top shelf. Okay, that's fine for now. Um, so, no idea what I'm doing here. This is not going to be fun. Not gonna be fun at all. Okay, um, so here is this is essentially my I don't know where to put you shelf. It goes at the very top because no one ever sees it. <laughs> um, it's essentially gonna look exactly the same as the last one. Just no, wait, how I I want to make it like even so it's not okay, that's better. That's better. Um, what do I have left? I have the yeah, I don't know where to put you shelf, which is what we're working on right now. Um, I have my Book of the Month Club shelf. Um, I have the rest of my contemporary books, which is a lot. I have so many extra contemporary books that aren't like my diverse or mental health books. Um, what else? What else? Um, I have, and then I have some spare fantasy books and some fa spare sci-fi and So I'm going to have a lot of extra shelf space on here, which is great. Um, so I'm just kind of have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I really don't know what I'm doing here. I got my shelf. Oh my god, I'm so afraid that was going to fall and hit me. <laughs> um, where did I get my shelves? They're from Ikea. Oh, yeah, okay. Let me address this. I know this is backwards. There's no way for me to fix it. I'm just going to paint it after. I was going to paint it beforehand, but I, I just I didn't have the time because I spent all of yesterday trying to get them to, like, I, I spent all of yesterday doing it. So I know it's backwards. I put it, it wasn't just Doug's fault. I blame myself too, but um, we messed up. It's fine. I'm going to paint it. It's not a big deal. All right, we're going to put these gigantic, um, books up here, which are, no, that can't stick out, okay, um, this is the art of Miss Peregrine's movie, and then, um, the Percy Jackson Greek Gods book, um, which he has a couple of, but they fit up there, so they're going to stay up there, they don't fit anywhere on my shelves, um, okay, let's finish putting the rest of these, Jeez, I have so many chapters in, but I don't need all these chapters together. okay, not Michael's fault. Michael had nothing to do with them. It was Doug's fault. Alright, we're gonna pick it in the corner. Uh, I have so many freaking chapters and we don't know what to do with them. <laughs> um, let me, let me see. Yes, I know, I know the bookshelves are backwards. I, that's all, that's the only comment I'm gonna get for the next how many, however many, <laughs> um, however long this takes to get through. So we're just gonna ignore it. Um, let's see. Oh! Alrighty, that was a thing that happened. Making progress, though. Making progress. Um, let's see. Okay. We're doing okay. We're doing okay. Hmm. This actually goes on my bolt shelf. 
because you say before I actually had an adult shelf, all my adult books went on the I have no idea where to put you shelf because I only had like five of them. But that's a thing. So yeah, yeah, we're here. And that's the, that's that. Now we're gonna shove this handful of chapter samplers, right? There's comics in here too. There's chapter samplers and comics, but I just don't know what to do with them. Oh, come on, that's so annoying. <laughs> Um, okay, you can go in the middle for now. Let's just shove you in the middle right there. Yeah, there we go. Nothing belongs together. It's fine. Whatever. No one's going to see it. Um, alrighty. Now, I don't know what I want to do here. I guess the book of the month books will go here. They're so colorful. I wanted them displayed, but I don't want them to interrupt the rest of my ebook. So really, we should just go. Um, would I like to come to Australia one day? I would love to come to Australia one day. I would absolutely love to come to Australia one day. Oh, this is going to make such a pretty shock. I'm so excited. Uh, but traveling from the U.S. is just so expensive to everywhere else. Like, traveling within Europe is so simple because all the countries are so close together. In America, everything's so far apart <laughs> from the rest of the world. So, yeah. We'll see how nice that looks, and I'll have the rest of my other three of the month today, and I'm going to end up having to have two of these shelves, but it's fine, everything's fine. Um, let's do contemporary next, I guess. I'm going to have to sit on the floor again in order for me to sort them properly. So I'm going to move all those over, and I'm going to have to drag these. No, don't fall. There's one. And two, and three. Oh man, <laughs> this is so good. And then four. All right, awesome. Three. <sighs> How am I sorting the contemporary? That's a great question because I really do not know. Um, I think. Well, I. I mean, I kind of have them. Somewhat sort of like I have like my like trashy YA all together, which is like John Green and the French Kiss, the rest of my Rainbow Rowell books. Um, so trashy YA, you guys can stay together, that's fine. <laughs> and the rest of you, no idea where you're going. I think I was thinking of sorting it into like creepy crime investigative books and then the rest of like just like normal YA romantic. Uh, contemporary, so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make them those two shelves, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Um, will I be doing a bookshelf tour? Yes, I will. Um, no idea when that's going to happen because it takes me five ever to do this. <laughs> um, and a bookshelf tour is going to take me about five hours to film. It takes me a really long time to film bookshelf tours. So, no idea when that's going up. Hopefully by the end of the summer, sometime in August, I'd really like to film it. But I am currently not sure. Okay, you're going to go there. Great, awesome. All right, let us, oh my god. So I live next to a firehouse. And um, I wasn't expecting it to be very vocal. So that's a thing that happens. All right, let's start creepy versus, oh wait. I'm missing a few more. Nope, here they are. Okay, awesome. Um, so, I mean, these are pretty sorted already. So, those are going to go one pile. And then we have, like, the, the creepy YA and other YA that, like, just... I don't know what I'm doing, guys. I'm really doing. <laughs> I don't have enough contemporary series for me to sort them by series. It's literally, like, these are just the rest of the contemporary books that I own, and there's no connection other than their YA contemporary. Um, I counted yesterday, and I have 506 books, so it's a lot. Um, am I looking forward to Cassandra Clare's Malik series? Of course, I am looking forward to The Eldest Curses. I think that's what's called, The Eldest Curses. Um, so yeah, someone said that maybe I need to unhaul some books. I have 150 books in my closet to unhaul, um, so I'm not exactly looking to unhaul more of them because there's currently no space in my closet for the rest of them. But, like, I went through, like, very extensively, like, what am I definitely not interested in reading anymore? And so, that's where we are at the moment. Um, 
I'm just trying to think of how else I can sort these. Um, oh, okay. This, this will go on that shelf. I think. Who knows at this point? I'm kind of just... Things you like least about BookTube. I literally just filmed a video on this. Um, I filmed a BookTube Q&A where you guys asked me questions on Twitter. And it was a lot, a lot of fun. I'm really glad I did it. It's like 25 minutes long. So I'm definitely looking forward to that video. <laughs> um, but yeah, I talked about them there. But I think like my least favorite things about BookTube don't come from the community itself. Like, they come, like the people that I interact with online, like, you guys were sitting here and watching and like genuinely like want to talk about books and stuff. Um, yeah, like that's great. You're all fantastic. I have no problems with you. I, my problems with BookTube come from the people who are on like the outskirts of the community is what I really consider it to be. And it's the people that like have literally nothing better to do than watch BookTube and talk shit about BookTubers. Um, because you really like, I, I, I do not understand why so many people hate watch booktubers, but you know, to each their own, if you got real life, that's your problem. But I, um, a lot of problems come from them because they spread so many lies and misconceptions about booktubers, and it really is aggravating. Um, oh, I can actually display some books, which is very exciting. I can do that, and I'll still have space for other books. Look at this. It's going fabulously. <laughs> Oh my god, I am I am living with the freedom to have space. Um, so yeah, mostly my problems with booktube just come from the people that generally just don't they don't they don't want to be a part of the community. They want they just want to hate watch people, and I find that really really dumb. Like I said, to each their own. Um, but I think it's really dumb when people just watch booktube to hate on booktube to say that booktubers. Um, to say that booktubers are like always lying about their feelings on books because they want to keep their relationship with publishers and just all that dumb crap that isn't true. That's not least your part of booktube. So it really has nothing to do with the community itself. It, you know, like you guys are literally so amazing and I could not be happier to be a part of the community for you guys, but it's the other people that just don't actually want to be a part of the community that I don't. Okay, let's try. Let's let's keep going. <laughs> alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Um, I can't believe I'm almost done. Like this, I was really expecting to be here for like three hours, but I'm only gonna be here for like three minutes. Like, this is going really, really great. Um, so yeah, this is like my creepy mystery sort of um, my creepy mystery book area. Sure, let's call it that. I want to display Stalking Jack the River because although it wasn't my favorite book of last year, um, or technically this year or this year, um, I think it's really pretty. So we're going to display it because I have the ability to do so right now because I have the room. I don't, you know, if you guys don't have um, the struggle of, um, you know, if you guys don't understand the struggle of keeping like having to always shove books into your bookshelf, you don't understand how good it feels to have space and be able to move things around. And sometimes it's a little annoying because it's like, now I have so many empty spaces, but I'm really, I'm loving the fact that I can, you know, move around and I have the ability to pick and choose where I want things to go. It's really cool. I haven't answered any questions. Um. I've been missing questions. I feel like I'm like not a part of the conversation and I'm not happy with that. Um, let me see. I have not read Fiercely Happy by Jenny Lawson, but I've been really wanting to listen to it on audiobook because I hear it is so great. Um, yeah. Oh, now everyone's back. When will you be having a room tour? Hmm. Um, I don't know. Um, I would like to figure that out in the future because I have wanted to do a room for it since I had my old YouTube channel. Um, but I haven't gotten the chance to because I've never been happy enough in my room to want to put it on the internet. As opposed, like, you know, compared to, what am I trying to say? <laughs> um, I never felt like super, super happy with my room, 
But now that I have my office and I have my own room, I'm so much more happy with at least the direction it's going in. So I will be able to, um, I will be able to do a room tour, hopefully fairly soon into the future. I'm exhausted. Um, is it, has anyone read HP in the illustrated editions? I have, I really, really love them. I only read, um, I've only read the uh, Sorcerer's Stone with the Illustrated Edition, but it's so worth it. Like, I told Doug when we have kids, like, our kids are reading Harry Potter through the Illustrated Editions because it's such an asset to the story. They're really, really great, and I would highly, highly recommend them. Um, so I'm going to see if I can finish up with these two shelves, and I'll have so much space. I'm so excited to have so much extra space. Um, so I've sorted, I have high fantasy books that I haven't, that like don't fit anywhere. And then I have like historical fantasy books. So let's see how I can do this. Let's see if all of these just fit. Do they all just fit? No, of course not. All right, I'm taking Ivory and Bowman. <laughs> That's out of order. I think Emerald Green is second. No, no, Emerald Green is the last one. I think. I think. Okay, um. What was I going to say? Yes, I've been with Doug for five and a half years now, as of August 5th. Um, let me see. I can't see any questions. What name do you use when you talk about Jace? This is actually a really good question. I sometimes get um, questions of it. So um, somebody actually just said the bottom half of my bookshelf needs to be heavier than the top. So I'm going to move them. So that's actually a really, really decent point. So I'm going to come back to that because that's very smart. Um, what name do I use when I refer to Jace? I actually use Jace Wayland because that was how he's introduced. and. I think calling out anything else to anyone, like, in public or in my videos or whatnot, um, has the potential to accidentally spoil, it, spoil people. And that's not what I'm about. I'm not here to spoil you guys. I'm not here to, um, you know, make you not as interested in the books anymore because, like, I accidentally spoiled them. So, um, I normally use J.S. Wayland in regular conversation just because it's so much easier to not have people be like, you spoiled me, and then you apologize. So yeah, that's that's why I use J. Swayland. So whoever told me that the bottom of my shelf should be heavier, thank you, that is genius. Um, let me see, so this is the rest of my, um, this is the rest of my like science, fiction, dystopian shelf. So that's a thing. I'm also gonna put um, let's put dark over here. There we go. Very nice, very nice. Um, and let me move those down. Um, where do I buy most of my books? I do buy most of them on. Um, I would say I buy most of them at Amazon probably because I don't have a lot of local bookstores near me. I live on Long Island and while there are certain ones, none of them are close to me. The closest independent bookstore that sells YA is like an hour plus away. So I haven't been able to, like I don't have the ability to go there. Like anytime a new book is out, I don't often get the ability to go to and support it in a bookstore. So I prefer to buy off of Amazon and like I don't like to because it does devalue the book industry and it kind of Fs over authors so I don't like that aspect of it but as somebody who doesn't have a lot of money and um, as somebody who um, likes their books the day of, like I, I really like having that uh, day of shipping when you pre-order. So Amazon is for me. If I lived in New York City, I would buy more books from the Strand and Books of Wonder, um, especially because the Strand has really, really great book deals. 
but I just don't have the ability to. Like I can only, I'm only in the city every day for the rest of the summer, and then after the summer, I'm not going to be in the city anymore because my internship is ending, so I'm not going to go to the city just to go to the cylinder. So mostly Amazon. Um, if it's like a UK edition, I'm going to buy it from a depository, but that's really it. Um, let's see. See, am I Italian? I am Italian. Oh, is it lagging? It's lagging. I don't know how to fix it if it's lagging. That's the problem. Um, can I edit my preferences in the middle of a live stream? I don't know if I can. I don't know how to fix it if it's lagging. Does anyone know anything about live streaming on YouTube? Because I sure as heck don't. Okay, well, people say it's not lagging anymore, so if it's, like, really, really bad and, like, that's unanimous, let me know. I'm sorry if it is lagging for you. Um, somebody asked me what I'm hoping to specialize in after graduate school, and I am hope, like, my, my intended field is working with adolescents with mental illness. I don't care, like, what, so I like, I would love to specialize in eating disorders just because that's, like, my thing, but, like, I'm not, like, I, I don't want to put myself in a box. I, want, I just want to work with adolescents with mental illness. Um, I, I would really like to get my creative arts therapist license so that I can develop on an idea I've had for quite some time um, in relation to treatment for people with eating disorders. So that would be very cool. But at the moment, um, at the moment, I'm just like, I'm just focusing on getting into grad school. That's like the only thing I can focus on right now is actually, um, I was going to say. The only thing I can focus on right now is finishing college, getting through the semester, and then getting into grad school. And that's like my thing right now. Like wherever I get in the future, it's fine. I just want to get to that space and focus on that. Um, I also am missing my copy of the Fellowship of the Ring, which I would really like back for my sister's boyfriend, but who knows? Um, let me see. Oh, don't fall now. I'm so close to being done. Awesome. Um, let's see. I don't live in New York City. I live on Long Island, so I'm like 30 minutes from New York City. So I'm pretty close. I'm pretty close. Um, let me see. I have heard of Malta. I've never been. The only places I really travel to is... England, uh, the Dominican Republic, and Mexico. So I haven't, I haven't explored much. I'd really like to in the future, but at the moment, um, I haven't, I haven't gone all over the world like I would like to. Okay, so that's done. Now I better I, I put all my books on my shelves already. Oh my god, that is like unreal. I cannot believe that happened. Oh my goodness. Alrighty, so let me, I'm just gonna move these down, which will be really, really great. Um, and then I'll be done. Yeah, I know it's backwards. I put it on the wrong way. <laughs> it happens. I'm gonna paint it. It's not a, it's just a bookshelf. It's not a big deal. Um, let me see. I saw a question that I really wanted to answer, but I can't find it. Um, do I dye my hair myself? My mom actually dyes it for me because I cannot dye it myself. Um, and my mom dyes it for me. Where do I get my makeup from? I get my makeup from Sephora, um, and sometimes Elf. I just started using NYX, um, for one of the Buy No Bibliothon challenges. So, that's cool. Uh, NYX is really nice, especially because they're fairly inexpensive, which I like. Love affordable makeup because all the makeup products are so expensive. Um, but yeah, so I mostly go to Sephora. Um, I've always wanted to go to Ulta, but I don't really know where there is one near me. So I would have to like look that up in order to get there. And I guess I'll move this down too, even though I like the shelf is so ugly, I want to vomit. Oh, why can't they all just like fit where they should go. So annoying. Oh. Let's 
see. Um, yeah, my favorite um, booktuber is Michael Bookline. Do I feel like I missed out living at home during college? No, not at all. I think if you were looking for the college experience, if you were looking for the parties and the sororities and like all of that stereotypical college stuff, go away. I am so happy I lived at home because I'm such an introvert. Like I, when I when I go to school, my intention is to learn. Like I'm not there to make friends. I'm not there to party. Like I'm literally there to get my education, pay my tuition, and get out. That's just my philosophy on how I handle school. So I don't need anything special. I go to a really small school. Um, I'm not disclosing it until I graduate specifically because it's really tiny and I know there's people that watch my YouTube channel that go to my school because I met viewers on campus, which is very cool. But I am keeping it a little on the DL because it is so freaking tiny. Um, but I have said another video, so it's not like a huge, huge secret. Um, but like at, like by staying home, I was able to get a car. My mom helped me with the down payment for my car because I stayed home. Had I gone away, I wouldn't have gotten a car, and I could not live without a car. Um, I've also been able to have multiple different jobs in college. Like I at one point, I was working three jobs and going to school. And I know that sounds crazy, but it worked out really well for me because that's what I needed to do at the time. Um, three jobs plus YouTube, I should say, because that I mean at the time it wasn't as much of a as much of an occupation as it is now, but you know. And so, um, so I was able to get a car, I was able to do that. Uh, my boyfriend's here, so I was able to see him as opposed to going away. Like, I just had so many more perks that like, aligned with me. I might, like, I have laundry, I clean laundry every day of the week. Um, I don't have to cook my own meals if my mother is home because she will still cook. Um, what else? Like, I have my own bed, I have my own room, I'm able to have all my books, I don't have to. Like, I feel like living at college for me would be like living out of a bag because I don't have everything I need to. So I'm just, I'm so much more comfortable at home. So I'm happy I stayed home. But he, like, it's different for everyone. Like, if that's not what you're looking for, if like you want to find friends in college, well, I'm not saying that you can't find friends in college staying home. It's my sister, but I just haven't been looking. But like, if you really want like the social college experience, I recommend going away because like you are forced to be in that position. Like, you have to be social when you go away. Because um, otherwise you don't know people and you're not able to connect. At least that's just my interpretation. I have never been uh, to college. I've only visited colleges away, so I don't exactly know the protocol for that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm happy that I stayed home. I really am. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe this is done. <gasps> I'm really like, I'm, I'm in awe. I do not believe that I am done. This is crazy. It's still light out, and I already organized my bookshelves. It literally only took me an hour and a half. How did that happen? Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, I will stay in chat for a little bit. I should really get food. I'm I'm starving, but <laughs> um, are me and Doug gonna get married? I hope so. He better he better propose to me someday. We've been together way too long for us not to get married. Um, yeah, Doug is my soulmate. We're gonna get married. Um, who knows if we'll have kids or whatever, but we're gonna be married at some point in the future. So I'm really excited for that. Um, no, this is, this is, well, uh, okay. <laughs> Someone was like, this is in all of your books. I'm like, well, all my books are on my shelves. This is, this is the main shelf. This is the backup shelf. So I'll, I'll change my position while I finish up this live show because this is my pride and joy right now. I'm in love with it. It's so beautiful. I'm dying. I'm so happy with it. <laughs> Let me, there we go. That's great. That's great. Um, what would your son's be if it wasn't Jace? Um, nothing. I, I, I don't think I could name, I can't think of a better name than Jace for my son in the future. So it's going to be Jace. Um, somebody, wants, somebody asked about, oh, my mouse is upside down. Wait one second. Let me find that question because I really want to answer it. Can you please give some advice on dealing with anxiety? Um, I definitely recommend seeking counseling. Um, I understand that's not an option for everyone, but I think a lot of people are just afraid to reach out, which is a shame because of stigma and it's horrible that a lot of us are put through that. But like there's a million different ways to get into counseling. Um, you know, obviously going through your family if you're a minor is an easy way because they can help you. Speaking with your pediatrician or your primary care doctor, um, people in those fields are usually very interconnected so they will have recommendations. So like that's how I got my counselor that I 
still see when I was first entering recovery from my eating disorder, I'd still see the same counselor. Um, and I got it through my pediatrician. Um, seeking out uh, school, like I used to be very close with my health teacher in high school and just having the ability to talk to her really helped. But there are also the school guidance counselors and the school social workers and school psychologists. So those people are like so helpful. Even if like they, even if you start speaking to them, they can direct you to places in the community that your school has trusted to take care of their students. So that is a great place for you to start if you are afraid of opening to your parents at first and you do want to start seeing someone like your school is such a great resource. Hopefully if you have a good school district, I'm, I'm trying to be aware of the fact that not everyone has had like the the privileged school experience that I've had. Um, but if you're looking, if, you know, if you're not able to enter counseling, if you are not ready to take that step, um, I really recommend finding coping strategies. I think coping strategies are so amazing. They're so helpful. I don't know where I would be in life had I not had coping strategies. But essentially, um, like some of my coping strategies that I use is reading. Obviously, reading is a great escape. It allows me to immerse myself into a different world, into a different person, and take a break from like the anxiety of today. So like if I am really stressed out, if I can get myself to just sit down and read, like I'm able to completely calm myself down because I'm focused on the story and then I'm able to address the problems in my life at a later, I'm realizing some of my books are out of order, I'm sorry. Um, I, you know, once I'm able to calm myself down from reading, I'm able to address these stressors in my life with a more calm mindset and that's really how I use coping strategies because you can't distract yourself to the point where you avoid your problems, you just need to use different things in order to help you overcome your problems. So another coping strategy of mine is hooping and dancing, exercise, endorphins makes you happy. Um, hooping personally for me is like such a form of accomplishment when I'm able to learn a new skill or I'm able to like master something I've been trying it for a while like there's so much pride that goes through me when that happens and that goes for any skill like uh, I like to watch hair tutorials or makeup tutorials or nail tutorials and try them out and that really helps me as well because like you know feeling good like feeling good about yourself and gaining confidence and feeling accomplished in your endeavors is such a great um, way for you to combat things like depression and anxiety and such because they really act as a buffer to those feelings. Um, another great coping strategy of mine that like I think sounds really stupid but it's so helpful to me and that is watching mindless YouTube videos. Like if I put on the BuzzFeed taste test playlist of like 500, 200 videos like I am set. I know I'm going to be okay when I turn on that playlist because I'm just like able to engage in something that is going to take my mind off of what is affecting me, but I'm not going to have to like throw myself into something else that's going to make me stressed. Um, or Good Mythical Morning is another one. I love watching Good Mythical Morning because like again, it's just, they're mindless videos. I don't need to pay like super close attention to their videos. They're just fun and funny and they make me feel good. So I, I really focus on like throwing myself into things that are going to make me happy, that are going to make me feel accomplished, that are going to make me feel good about myself. And this is different for everyone. You know, maybe you love music, maybe you love writing or poetry or art. Like all of those things are such great assets to you. And if you can train yourself to say in the moment, like I'm feeling really anxious, I might be on the verge of an anxiety attack, like instead of letting that play out, you know, using those moments as like, I know that I need to get myself to a better place, I'm going to use my coping strategies that's such a great way to cope on your own. So I am like a huge advocate for coping strategies. Um, so I hope that helps. Um, it's really hard for me to give advice on uh, dealing with mental illness on your own because I think that it is so hard to get through without the help of other people and without a support circle. Not saying it's impossible, but it's, it's very difficult. And I always recommend reaching out to support circle at every single possible moment. And I think we're, we're moving to a place in the world where mental illness is and mental health is being talked about more and that's such a great thing and I think that a lot of the stigma and fear that people experience in the stages of just getting help um, is really starting to lessen at least from when I first entered recovery to now like there's so much more discussion about mental health and I think that's a great thing. So I hope that answers your question. I really hope that helps because I always get super super nervous about that. <laughs> um, what was the question? What are those white books behind you? Those are the UK edition. I'm, I'm, well, there's actually two books. Um, the ones, okay, those are the country, the Gathering of Shadow, the Shades of Magic series by V.E. Schwab, and those are the UK covers of Throne of Glass. 
Um, oh my goodness. Okay, I am probably going to sit here for another 20 minutes and talk with you guys, which is what I did last time. And then I'm going to go get food because I cannot believe I finished my bookshelves already. Like, I'm, I'm seriously amazed. I cannot believe it. This is unbelievable in my opinion. Um, where do you learn your hooping moves? I learned to hoop. I learned to hoop on YouTube, basically. Um, Googling beginner hooper tricks. So many tutorials. Um, it's really just a matter of like searching online. There's so many tutorials for each trick. Like, you know, one beginner trick has like 50 different tutorials. So there's going to be someone that you're able to learn from. Um, and then like the, the more you get, the more you get used to, um, hooping and the more you get used to learning how to make your body do different things with the hoop, it gets easier to self teach yourself. So like I'm able to watch a trick and Sometimes if like I'm not understanding the tutorials, I'm able to teach myself how to do it, which is really, really great. But always YouTube tutorials, always right there. Have I watched Friends? I have. I just rewatched Friends not that long ago, and it's so amazing. I love Friends. It's a great, great show. Uh, somebody asked me if I upheld the maze or I haven't. It's over there. <laughs> um... What do you do with your books you no longer want? I haven't done anything with my books I no longer want. I have literally 150 plus books in my closet from the beginning of buying books. I started buying books in January of 2014 to now. I literally have not unhauled a book ever in my life. Um, and so uh, they're kind of just sitting there. I'm not entirely sure what I am doing with those yet no idea um i am in between like donating some of them and giving away some of them and selling some of them i have no idea what i'm doing i would really like to sell my books because i would like to get the money back that i sent on them because that allows me to like pay off my other bills or to um you know buy other books so i'd like to sell some of them so i might um i might try and sell some of them somewhere on the internet or somewhere at bookstores. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to donate them probably to like my library or to, you know, I, I really like to donate. Like I know women's prisons don't get a lot of books. I would love to donate some books to women's prisons. And I know that there are resources for me to do that. I just have to get off my butt and actually work on unhauling those books. <sighs> yeah, I really want to sell them. I don't have a half price books near me. <laughs> There's no half price books on Long Island, let alone in New York. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm trying to do a nice mix because I would like to give back, but I would like to get some back. So I cannot say that Dutch Dutch sex Dutch sentence. I can't even say Dutch sentence in English. Um, yeah, I'm not really good at foreign language. The only foreign language I was ever good at is French, and I still haven't studied French in three years. So yeah. Um, what's my religion? I think I answered this in my last live bookshelf re reorganization video. I was brought up Catholic. Um, when I was 15, I got rebaptized as, I believe, a Pentecostal Christian. They weren't, like, into really using labels, but it was a totally different branch of Christianity. Um, and then at the time that I was suffering from my eating disorder, um, the church stopped being as supportive as I needed them to be, and it was more toxic to my mental health. So I ended up leaving my church when I was 16. Um, and I don't consider myself to be practicing any religion at the moment, but um, I do still consider myself a Christian. Um, so yeah, that's my story. One day, maybe I'll go more in depth about it. But essentially, like, I, you know, I was very, very religious for many years of my life. And I was very, 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 very committed to my faith. But the church I was at just wasn't as supportive as it needed to be in like my real time of need. So I left and I'm, I'm happier where I am now than I was then. So I'd like to go back in the future. But no idea when that'll happen, to be honest. Um, my first job was a local family-owned sneaker store, and I worked there for five years. Um, and I quit maybe like a year or two ago now? No, a year, definitely like a year ago. Um, so I worked there for a very long time. Um, it was definitely a really good, it was definitely a really good uh, first store experience. It wasn't too intensive. All my friends worked there, and it was really, it was a good time. We had a lot of good times. Um, do I have any recommendations for people who want to start reading fantasy but don't know where to start? I always recommend urban fantasy for people who, like, aren't into fantasy because it's a good transition between modern day world and fantasy elements. So I always recommend, um, always recommend Harry Potter and the Mortal Instruments and the Shadow Under Chronicles. Like, those are my staple recommendations for urban fantasy. Uh, 
I would also, oh my god, my nose is getting really stuffed from talking. I don't know why that happens to me. My nose gets really, really stuffed. Um, I'd also recommend Rick Riordan's books, the Percy Jackson series. are so much fun, and I'm so excited to continue reading the rest of Rick Riordan's books this year. Um, other urban fantasy books that I love, Vampire Academy, if you like vampires, I love Vampire Academy and Bloodlines. Definitely a staple. Um, those are some of my, like, go-to urban fantasy books. If you're looking to, if you're looking to get more into, um, like, high fantasy, always recommend Six of Crows. Um, I think, I think, um, Heartless is also really fun if you, like, Alice in Wonderland, it's a retelling of the story of the Queen of Hearts, and it's a lot, a lot of fun. Um, so those are some of my, like, staple fantasy recommendations. Um, have you read One of Us is Lying? I haven't. Um, I'm not planning on reading it. I've heard some things about it that I don't agree with personally, and it's not something that I want to support. But if you liked it, I'm so glad. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I just have heard some negative things that, like, I know that I wouldn't be comfortable reading about, so I don't want to put myself in that position, but I understand a lot of people liked it, and that's fine. Like, you're able to like a book that I don't like. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite part about living in New York? My favorite part of living in New York is the fact that everything is so close. Like, literally, if I leave my house, I will walk for five minutes, and I'll hit the post office, I'll hit the fire department, I'll hit the post office, the liquor store, which is not something I frequently go to, but it's there. Uh, two pizza places, a laundromat, a deli, two restaurants, a Chinese place, and a library. Like, I have so much just on my street, let alone the fact that I'm, like, 15 minutes away from a huge mall. I'm 10 minutes from the beach. I've never had to drive further than 10 minutes to get to work. I have so many food options near me, and I'm a 45-minute train ride from the city. So, like, everything I could possibly need in life is so close, and that's why I really love it. Um, was Ramona Blue an LGBTQ plus positive book? The plot seemed kind of con kind of controversial. I haven't read Ramona Blue yet, but I'm really hoping to by the end of this year. Um, I have heard some critiques of it as it plays into the like straight guy can fix a lesbian trope. Lots of air quotes because obviously very very incorrect and harmful for someone to promote. Uh, but it is an own voices book about bisexuality, and I think you know. From the reviewers that I trust who have read it and what they've said about it is that it is more of a focus on or like a narrative of how sexuality is fluid and how you can identify something in your life at one point and then realize that that label may not be applicable to you at some point. So I think it's really more about, it's less about a lesbian who is turned straight, but it's more about a lesbian who realizes that she's bisexual because she realizes that she could be attracted to men as well. Um, that's just my interpretation of it. I have not read it. Don't quote me. That those are really not my opinions. Like, it's just how I can see. Uh, that's what I've heard. Um, what did you think about things I should have known by Claire Lezebnik? I am filming a review for that this week, and it's coming soon. I personally really loved it. I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. Um, I'm nervous about reviewing it because I have no experience in regards to, uh, aut autism representation in books. So I'm super uncomfortable at the thought because it's so out of my lane. Um, but I also, I, like, I haven't found any reviews from people who are on the spectrum and how they felt about the representation, which, like, I wish I could include, but I have not found any. Um, but I really loved it. It's a great narrative on sisterhood. And um, I think it's just, it, I think it was a fun book, like I was addicted to it. Um, I really liked the characters. Um, I will say one of the things that I was looking for in this book is I went into it, like I, I researched a lot about autism right beforehand so that I could know what, like was I looking for, what was good, what was bad. I went into it looking for inspiration porn, meaning that it was a story of a sister who was going to grow because of their sibling with autism. Did not get vibes like that whatsoever. Um, both Ivy, who has autism, and Chloe, who is neurotypical, they both grow, but they grow individual of each other. Like, they're not dependent on each other, and the story is really about the both of them and how they grow, which made me really happy to see. Um, and I know that the author does have a son with autism, and she has published nonfiction works related to autism, as well as she's worked with the Santa Monica Center for Autism. So, like, she, she knows her, like, I'm not concerned about her research, it's just the execution that I can't speak on because it's not my representation. But I really, really enjoyed it and I'm excited to review it. Um, and uh, the, the, what am I trying to say? The book is called Things I Should Have Known by Claire Lizemnik, and I hope it's great. 
I hope I like I hope I I thought it was great. I hope the representation is good. I just can't speak on it. Uh, but I would love to find more reviews from people who identify as a part of the autism spectrum to verify those claims because I cannot speak on it. Um, what do you do when you can't decide on a major and are starting your third year of community college and I almost have my associates? I have many different interests but no passions except reading. Have you cons I mean, I think a lot of it, like, you know, I'm, like, not the person to ask on this because I've known what I wanted to do since I was 15. So, like, I always feel terrible that I can't offer more of my personal experience with it. But I think um, it's just a matter of finding, like, your interests. You know what I mean? Like, if you've taken electives, like, what is there any that you've really enjoyed? Maybe you can see yourself, you know, going into, like, communications or marketing because you like social media. Or maybe you... Um, Maybe you have a passion for art and you want to go for like an art major or a um, art teacher or a photographer, um, you know, dance major. I think a lot of it is just choose one of your passions. And, you know, um, I don't think that degrees are as constricting as other people do. Like I know like my sister has, has her degree in psychology. She went to grad school for a semester, didn't like it, realized she wasn't happy there. And now she's very successful in the finance industry. So I think... A lot of people think like they have to go into their field of their um, their their major. So like I think a lot of people think if you major in business, you have to go into business, or if you major in, in English, you like have to be an English teacher or a writer or in publishing. But I don't think that's true whatsoever. I think it's just a matter of like going with your gut feeling, and you know picking something that you're genuinely interested in that's going to make you happy. And for all you know, in a few years, you might be in a completely different field, and that's fine. But I just you know, if you're getting your degree, you're already on the right path, and um, I, I don't think unless, like, if you're, like, if you're being a doctor, you kind of have to go for pre-med, but, like, I think a lot of other, um, a lot of other majors are so, what am I trying to say? I think a lot of other majors, you're able to have more leeway in what you do. Um, you know, I, I feel like it's not as concrete for some majors, so if you're not super passionate about, like, one specific area, um, you know, just go with your gut. I'm sorry, this is really terrible advice. I don't have any experience with it, but I know you'll be okay no matter what you choose. Um, could you tell me what you don't want to support with one of us is lying? I'd really like to know before I pick it up. Um, Trina from Between Chapters, fabulous booktuber, love her. She has a great Goodreads review that goes into it. Um, essentially, from her perspective, which I definitely would, agree, I think I would feel the same way had I read this book myself. Um, and she's a reviewer I trust. She talks about how it demonizes mental illness and how sexuality is used as a plot twist. And, like, both of those things together, not really a fan of, um, you know, especially with mental health rep being so important to me. Um, hearing, like, I don't want to read a book that's going to demonize me for having depression or I'm not entirely sure what is expressed in the book. Um, and they do also, uh, Trina's review does have, like, spoiler warnings if you don't want to go too much into it. But um, that's generally why I don't want to read it. If you want to read it or if you've read it and loved it, like, that's fine. Like, I really, I'm not the type of person that's going to shame you for reading a book or loving a book that I don't agree with. That's totally fine. Read what you want to read. Love what you want to love. That's fine. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I am going to be leaving very soon. So, yeah. Um, what challenges of the Summer Rhino Bibliothon are you most looking forward to see, post, or read? Um, we actually have our Binding Bibliothon free live show, which is coming on Monday at, I think it is 6 p.m. EST. So around this time on Monday, we'll be having our free live show with all the hosts, and we're going to be chatting about our progress, where we are in the Bibliothon, what are we most excited for and stuff. Um, I have four challenges, I'm sorry, I have four challenges filmed, and I'm hoping to film one more tomorrow, which I'm really nervous for because it's the one that's like the least developed upon. But um, the two I'm not doing is the pickup lines one because I really wanted to do a video where I went around the beach and like used actual bookish pickup lines on strangers to see, but too much anxiety for that. Um, and when I have an idea with the Bibliothon, like I want to do that idea and nothing else is going to satisfy me. So I'm not doing that one. And the second challenge I'm not doing is the lip sync or dance battle one because again, I had ideas. Um, I was going to do like the, the Hunger Games, but instead it was going to be a dance battle, but I just didn't have the time to like learn the dances I wanted to learn and to set up a green screen and to do outfits and stuff. So I, have, I didn't have enough time for that one, but I have five challenges that I'm very proud of. Um, I think my favorite one is the Mortal Instruments skit. Of course, it's always a Mortal Instruments skit. 
Um, but it is the Villain Hero Plot Swap. So I'm very excited for that one. Someone asked me if we watch all bio submissions. We watch every single one. Um, you know, we, like, not every single, I don't think every single host watch every single one because at the end of the week that accumulates to hundreds and hundreds of videos. Like, last year we had about 400 submissions. That's a lot of videos to watch. But definitely, like, your host is watching your video if you're entering it. Like, the reason we take a week or two in order to, um, the reason we take a week or two to announce the winners is because we go through every single submission. We verify with each other with what we, like, you know, if we clash and we're like, we both want this person, only one person wins the challenge. So we have to communicate with each other and such. So, um, yeah, we definitely watch every single submission. If you are posting it in the comments of the Bino Bubbly Fun daily video for that day from the challenge you're entering, we are absolutely watching your video. And I'm really excited to watch all of this. <laughs> Um, someone's asking what I'm getting to eat. I think Michael asked, I saw a few other people. My mom's at a party at the beach right now because the beach is like right behind my house. And um, I think I'm just going to go there and steal like a hamburger and a hot dog because I am starving and I'd really like Chipotle <laughs> because I always want Chipotle but I don't want to spend $10 on food. Um, so yeah, that's a thing. Oh, okay. Um, diversity book recommendations. It's so hard to find aiming character that looks like me because of who I can relate to. Um, what representation are you looking for? Because I, I have a few, I, ha, I would like to say I have at least one for, for each book. Um, I mean, for, I would like to think that I have like at least one recommendation or a book I can suggest even if I haven't read it for a certain marginalization. Um, so if you want to clarify as to like if there was a specific rep you're looking for, I would love to give it to you. Oh, uh, now you're all talking about food and I'm so hungry, but I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay for another five minutes and chat with you guys. Um, and you know, I'll be on Instagram live in the future. I go, I do Instagram lives every week or so. Um, yeah. Um, what do I think of new adult as a genre? It's not my favorite. Um, I would definitely rather read young adult because I think young adult definitely focuses a lot on sex. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Sex in books is great. Um, but like the young, the new adult I read at least is mostly contemporary, um, and it's not, it's just not my favorite. Like I, I prefer YA, I'm going to read a YA over an adult book and I like adult books better than I like, um, I like adult books better than I like new adult books. So it's just not my favorite. Um, Asian characters in books. Um, the, the Lara Jean series, what is it? 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 Oh my God. What is it called? Oh my god, my, to, to all the boys I've loved before, that I think she might be Korean, I could be wrong, I'm so sorry if I am, I don't remember exactly which East Asian country she comes from, um, when Dimple met where she has two Indian main characters and their own voices, and also to all the boys I've loved before, his own voices as well, um, I think the takedown by, I'm looking at it, I don't remember what, I don't remember her name. I'm pretty sure the takedown um, has another East Asian main character. I haven't read it, so I can't tell you where she exactly comes from. And that's like my my intention when giving diverse recommendations is to tell you exactly where the character is from. So I haven't read the takedown. I don't exactly know where. Um, yeah, Eleanor and Park apparently has another Asian character, but I have heard some mixed things about that rep, so I don't know how positive that would be. Um, but it's there if you want to give it a chance. Um, uh, trying to think. I feel like there's so many more books coming out now. Like, for example, Warcross by Marie, Marie Lu also has, I think, a Japanese main character. And um, I'm really excited for that book. That's another one I'm going to be reading really soon. Um, so there is a Japanese main character in that one. Also, Flame of the Mist has a Japanese main character, which is great. Uh, I'm looking and looking and looking and looking and looking. Um, also, Cinder main character who is Chinese, also have heard some shoddy things about that representation. Not entirely sure. Um, oh, that was really loud. Um, the, the, what is it called? Dang it, what's it called? The Tiny Pretty Things series um, has a Korean American main character, uh, which is really great. Um, do I know any more? I'm trying to remember what other recommendations. Um, biracial representation, How to Make a Wish by Ashley Herring Blake. Um, I believe she is half black. Don't quote me on it, but I know for a fact she's biracial. Um, I'm trying to think. I just I just had another rec recommendation in my head, and I can't remember it. <laughs> There's, there are definitely more biracial characters in literature. 
Oh, um, everything, everything, not great for disability rep. Would advise against it if you were looking for good disability rep. But there is a biracial main character that a lot of people enjoy. So that as well. Um, trying to think of, I can think of any more like off the top of my head, which I don't know if I can do. I'm, like trying to look. Now they're all in one place and I still can't think of it. Yes, Jem, Jem is half Chinese, I believe. I think he's half Chinese. Oh, oh, um, um, The Sun is also a star. Thank you for reminding me. The Sun is also a star. It has a Jamaican main character, and it also has a Korean-American main character. Oh, there's so many great books out. I love it so much. Um, for Autism Rep, I have only read Things I Should Have Known by Claire Lezebnik. The main character does not have autism. Her sister does. I've only seen good things about the autism rep, but none of that has come from actual people on the spectrum, so I can't, like, I don't want to tell you for sure it's great representation, because it's not something that you can speak for. Um, for Muslim representation, again, the only book that I have read is Does My Head Look Big in This by, oh, I can't remember how to pronounce her name. Um, Does My Head Look Big in This, great book for a um, Muslim character. I've had it recommended to me by so many Muslim readers, and it was a really great reading experience. Um, Saints, and Mits, Mit, Saints and Misfits also just came out with a Muslim main character, and that one I'm really excited to read, though I have heard that there is a trigger warning for, I think, sexual abuse in that book, so be careful. Um, one more book with Muslim main character that I'm really excited for is Written in the Stars by Aishia Saeed, I believe her name is. Um, another book, really, really excited for that one as well. So yeah, there's so many great ones, so many great books out right now. Um, it is 8 o'clock, I've been on here for two hours, and I finished reorganizing my bookshelves like a half an hour ago. So, um, I, I'm i going to wrap this one up, but, oh, one more, eating disorder representation, because I love talking about eating disorder representation. Um, what I Lost by is Alexander Ballard, my number one eating disorder book recommendation. It features a girl with anorexia. Um, I love Paperweight as well, which features a girl with bulimia, but, like, big, big trigger warning on that one. Um, and Not Otherwise Specified by Hannah Moskowitz features a girl with eating disorders not otherwise specified. Um, and that also is a great book for intersectionality because it has a main character who, in addition to having eating disorder not otherwise specified, which is now called Otherwise Specified Eating or Feeding Disorder, Feeding or Eating Disorder. Um, so that one also has, you have the eating disorder rep, you also have a black teen and a bisexual teen and it's really great so i am signing off we'll talk on twitter we'll talk on instagram we'll talk on youtube and snapchat i forgot to snap that i was doing this oops um but thank you guys so much for watching i had so much fun chatting with you i hope it was somewhat entertaining um but yeah i i'm so happy with my bookshelves let's just get one more one more of the beauty shots look at that so gorgeous and then my other two shelves so far also so nice thank you guys so much for your help because i definitely relied on you guys a lot but i really really loved talking with you guys and maybe i'll do another youtube live stream soon because there's so many more of you as compared to my instagram live streams and such but i had a really great time so thank you guys so much for watching um i'm compelled to end it with that as it for this video because <laughs> i'll have a good one um but yeah so thank you guys so much for watching and i will talk to you soon Bye.